Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day four of AFM, and welcome back to the Pacific stage. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here with our first session of the day titled An Interactive Study, How to Cast the Right Actors for Your Film by Using AI, presented by Largo AI. It is my pleasure to introduce our moderator, Anna Maria Montera. Thank you so much for joining us, Anna Maria. Thank you so much, Aaron, for the kind introduction. And good morning to all of you joining us from the West Coast. In my case, I'm in Zurich, Switzerland. So good evening to everybody in Central Europe as we're ready to end our day. But regardless, we are all super happy that you have decided to join us today for this interactive study, how to cast the right actress for your film by using AI, as he just said, sponsored by Largo and of course the American film market. As you said, my name is Ana Maria, and I am thrilled to be your guide for the next hour, where we're going to look at all of the different ways in which AI can support you. How does it work? Who uses it? Who designed it? Um, is this the death of creativity in the casting process? We think not, but you know we're going to hear all kinds of different opinions on that. And can we predict some of the major actors in upcoming films. So speaking of which, um, everybody listening, you're welcome to send in your questions as we go using that Q&A function. It's going to be open and we will try to get to as many questions as we can by the end of the session. And not only this, but there will be about three points throughout the session where we would really love for you to interact. And we're going to ask a few questions and invite you to answer these via a, a program menti.com. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we will absolutely explain it to you when we get there. Now I am happy to introduce some industry experts who are going to help us navigate these waters. First, I'd like to start with Darren Simmons. She is president in Co of Cohesive Entertainment Group. And you're calling in from California, right, Darren? I'm in California, yes. Okay, so Great good to morning be here. to you. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> now, Darren, you're a producer, talent manager, digital strategist, entrepreneur, past president of the Talent Managers Association, um, won a series of awards, the Heller Awards. Prior to management, worked in development and production at various studios, Paramount, Sony, Fox, um, also a member of the PGA, Television Academy, Children in Film, Independent Film, women in film, um, just an amazing, amazing track record. But I, I want to mention that recently you produced Nelson Bixby Takes on the Whole Wide World for Disney, locating Silver Lake uh, with Finn Wittrock, and also The Duck Collector with Tony Todd, Lewis Mandalore, and Scott Atkins for Sony Netflix. So thank you so much for being with us today and for taking time out of thank what's you. obviously a very busy schedule. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Thank thrilled you. to be here. Wonderful. And next, I'd like to introduce Sean Cisterna, who is joining us, I believe, from Toronto. Is that right? That's right. Toronto, Canada. It's uh, afternoon here and very happy to be here. I don't have quite as many accolades as, as Darren, but uh, very happy to be here. <laughs> no, well, no, 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 no. Let me, let me just get to that. You're a director producer of Mythic Productions, um, a multi-award winning director whose most recent film is From the Vine just done in, done in 20, produced in 2020 or released in 2020. Is that right? Yeah. Released? That's released, yeah. Um, you've also directed the acclaimed cancer drama Kiss and Cry, which is playing now on Netflix, which, wow, topped the Canadian box office. And in 2005, your feature Full Out, starring Jennifer Beals, is based on the true story of gymnast Ariana Berlin was broadcast in over 195 NBC affiliates leading into the Summer Olympics, and now also resides at Netflix Worldwide sure. and Disney Europe. So I know you've got a couple of, uh, also now two features in post-production, one narrative, one documentary, set for release when? Uh, in 2022, yeah, and both using uh, Largo AI as um, you know a tool to, to help uh, inform the distribution and uh, excited to chat about that later. Oh my gosh, we look forward to it. So thank you for that, Sean, and welcome. Thanks for being with us. And last but not least, absolutely, is a bit the instigator of today's <laughs> program, Sammy Arpa, CEO of Largo AI. 
the founder and CEO, Switzerland-based company that provides data-assisted intelligence to the audio audiovisual industry. Now, Sammy has a background both in computer science and film industry, so this is a bit your sweet spot, if, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. <laughs> okay. That will be true, yeah. Now, earned your PhD in computer vision from EPFL, which for those of you who haven't heard of it, is a very prestigious Swiss university. He's directed two short films in 2014, 2015, and is also the founder and president of the Wuxi Film Awards, which take place in Lausanne. So, Sammy, now that we finish with you, let's again start with you. Lay it out for us. How does AI casting actually work? Thank you very much, Anna Maria, for the intro. And welcome, everybody, for uh, today's session. Uh, so, we will. Uh, expect your participation at some part of the presentation as well. Please participate in our surveys. Uh, we want this to be as interactive as possible. Uh, let me share my screen and then we can start. Okay. So as Largo AI, we provide artificial intelligence support uh, for the movie industry. Basically, you can get uh, uh, results, uh, AI results, AI insights uh, by uploading uh, screenplay uh, or the video version of your film. Uh, but today we will focus on the casting part uh, as AI provides uh, uh, very interesting insights uh, for, for the casting as well. I will shortly talk about uh, how this casting uh, system is working. Uh, then uh, we will, I will show also some interesting insights uh, by aggregating the data uh, to show the potential benefits uh, that we can get uh, with, uh, with these casting tools pro uh, provided by the AI. Uh, so basically the way AI casting is working is uh, 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 is creating cinematographic DNAs for the characters and also actors with their uh, previous performances. We have uh, 1,000 uh, cinematographic attributes. And then as soon as you upload your screenplay, the system automatically analyzing uh, your characters and it finds uh, the, its correlation uh, with all of these attributes. We have here one example. Uh, Joe Marsh character from uh, Little Woman uh, movie from 2019. Uh, as you can see, the system is finding some of the uh, attributes, uh, these uh, cinematographic attributes. Well, these are attributes that has been uh, mostly related uh, to, to, to the content in the previous films and system has defined these 1000 most important element and it finds correlation of those with any uh, content put into the system. Here for this character, it finds like period piece, costume drama, uh, wedding, books, literature, pageant, woman, 18th century, romantic relationships. But these are some of the most important parameters that he's finding, but of course it's not the only one. So this, this continues, uh, this list. Uh, if you have watched uh, the film, yeah, you can understand such correlation. Uh, then the same way, as I mentioned, we create cinematographic uh, DNAs uh, for the actors. We talk about here uh, like seven uh, digit number actors or uh, median actors. Uh, and then uh, the system finds the amount of match between the character and then these actors. Uh, here we have Seshu uh, uh, who played, uh, who was actually original cast, and system finds a really great match uh, between these two, 92% uh, match. We will have more of uh, more on this uh, towards the end of the presentation, but at least I hope this gives a bit of main idea the way AI is bringing uh, the characters and, and actors together. And uh, so here one important question is that, by using AI, uh, 
what uh, do we do we change the, the traditional workflow of casting because the casting agencies and managers are having uh, really an important role uh, what it means if you use ai so here the important thing uh, to is to understand ai is not finishing your casting process it brings you a short list of the candidates uh, but it doesn't manage the relationship. It doesn't create the relationship with this uh, uh, potential cast. So still casting agencies and managers are really key, even if you use uh, the AI tools. But it brings really the significant advantages because we talk about hundreds of thousands of actors. Uh, and then uh, it automatically tries to find the potential connections between your character and this hundred thousand between this uh, over these hundred thousand actors uh, then it can easily bring uh, certain short list that that would bring value for you and it's sometimes uh, some actors that are hidden in the corner that you would never recognize uh, with the ai suggestion you can see this the connection the potential value it can bring and it could be uh, potentially the casts that uh, you will go with and then uh, one big advantage uh, that we see these casting AI casting tools uh, can bring is uh, this democratization process. Here, uh, we can put this in three categories. Firstly, uh, we see AI provides more wider opportunities. It doesn't just focus on certain cluster of actors. Uh, it can bring some uh, potential uh, actors uh, in front of your table maybe you would never think we will provide a case study results uh, for that uh, uh, to make uh, it a bit more clear what this means and then uh, two other important things that uh, ai brings here is uh, uh, related to diversity problems firstly uh, the gender bias and second is the ethnicity bias we will go over those today as well with, uh, with some uh, data results. So firstly, uh, providing the opportunities to a wider uh, range of uh, wider possibility of the actors. For this, as I mentioned, we have a case study. Here you see uh, this is uh, the result coming uh, directly from our platform. We checked uh, 300 movies uh, that has uh, used our platform, that have used our platform, which were in uh, the movies in pre-production stage. Uh, and then uh, for these 300 movies, uh, the system proposed some actors for their top uh, characters. And normally it proposes uh, five potential actors for each character. So in total, it proposed 7,147 actors for these 300 movies. And 3,238 of those uh, actors, over 7,000 uh, actors, were different actors. So that means two an actor is proposed uh, 2.2 times in, in average. So that's a really great verification that AI is not just focusing certain actors that that is clear uh, in the past that has been always successful, just focus on that, which is easier case. Uh, but it also, since it looks really the potential connections of these actors with your character in a, in a very uh, comprehensive way, it can find some uh, connections that could really bring, uh, bring the success you would never think, uh, uh, and it's puts this in front of your table. So that, that's what we mean uh, with, with the AI brings actually uh, more opportunity for, for, for the different actors. Okay, and the second uh, part uh, for this democratization process was this diversity aspect we mentioned. This is a problem that industry is uh, discussing uh, very much uh, in recent years as well. So uh, we know there is a gender bias. Uh, women, uh, women are less represented uh, in the uh, top characters. Here we aggregated the data to see what is happening. Is there a change in last years? 
you see we got uh, the average representation of the woman at first character, second character, and third character in last 20 years, last 10 years, last five years, and last three years. For the first character, uh, for the lead role, uh, we see there's a good improvement from 32% to 38% uh, once we compare last 20 years and last three years. But there is an interesting thing here. If we look at second and third character, uh, we cannot see any change. For these uh, characters as well, there is a dominance of men. Uh, so we have a change in lead uh, actor, but not change in the yeah, supporting uh, uh, actors. So that makes actually the average change uh, not too significant. So it has changed from 39 to 40%, almost like a 1% change. So that creates actually a question if, if there is an effort in the industry to give uh, more space to women in, uh, in these uh, leading uh, uh, characters. But we see this only at first character. That has not been reflected in second and third characters uh, according to the data we have aggregated. And this is coming from 22,000 movies. It's a very uh, big uh, data. Uh, and then the other interesting thing is these differences, uh, as you can expect, uh, is very uh, high once we look at uh, specific genre films. Here you see the results for action uh, movies. That representation uh, uh, for uh, women uh, in lead actors was around 15% if you take 20 years average. And last three years average, it is around 25%. It has been almost doubled. But again, we don't see that change for second and third character, uh, which makes average change uh, very conservative. And lastly, we can look at here uh, the movies with romance uh, genre. Uh, here we have more uh, representation uh, in for the lead uh, roles uh, by women. From 42, we see uh, a change around 50 uh, if you take the last five years average. But there is a drop from last five years to last three years. Uh, which is around two, three uh, percent. So, I mean, that's that's one thing. Uh, well, not only AI, but also with the data. Once we aggregate, we can understand the problems uh, more easily, and and then once we use AI, we can overcome. Uh, well, or we can get the tools to overcome uh, such problems more easily. Uh, and one of uh, those uh, problems related to diversity is ethnicity. Once we have designed uh, our AI, we didn't want to give ethnicity information to, to the system. Because if you give the ethnicity information, it will learn the same bias that industry has today. Uh, once we said, uh, we thought once it is making, it is casting propositions, it should make independent from the ethnicity. So it only consider uh, considers how much the, the content is matching and also the other elements like budget, uh, the country, uh, language, uh, such uh, practical parameters uh, like that. Uh, but then uh, we have seen this has not been uh, well perceived by all producers because it creates some problems in practical manners. Uh, you might have certain characters really that really should be with a certain ethnicity. Like let's say you have a, a black actor that character has been defined as a black actor. It might have like uh, story uh, in, uh, importance in terms of story, but the system with such uh, training, it can propose uh, white uh, actors for, for such a black character. Uh, so this is uh, this is a challenge in our system now. Uh, it's always a question we ask to ourselves as well. So today we want to ask the same question to you. Uh, what do you think uh, about uh, that? So should the AI be ethnicity blind? For that, we will open a survey uh, and then we can share the results right away with you. Uh, yeah, please to vote for that. Uh, 
go to webpage90.com. You can go uh, by using your phone or computer. And then you need to use the following codes that you see here, 95760634. Awesome, San Sammy, thank you so much. Um, for those of you that wanna participate, we're gonna give you a couple of minutes to do this. Go to menti.com. Put in that number, 95760634, and put in your vote. Should AI be ethnicity blind? And while we wait for those results to come in, I'm going to pose this question just straight out to our panelists. Sean, what is your reaction? What would be your answer to this question? Oh, should AI be uh, ethnicity blind? Um, I think uh, I think it depends on what you're casting. Like one of the one of the things I love about the casting process is being um, surprised. So uh, unless you're writing for a specific actor and, and fully envision them in that role, then, then casting is where you can sit back and watch these characters on the page you've, you've come to, you know, to, throughout the development process. Um, you, you, you see them before you in physical form and they may have a different persona, a different look and a different vibe, all these wonderful things that an actor brings to a role. And that's what makes it uh, exciting. So I believe that uh, AI um, should be blind in that regards. So, so I can mm. be surprised when I'm, uh, when I'm casting. Okay, what about you, Darren? I absolutely appreciate AI um, being blind. Uh, in the beginning, when I first started uh, to look at the system, I was actually worried that AI was, was um, not going to take that into effect. And I was actually pleasantly surprised because our project is a 1950s um, uh, historic um, drama based in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So when it actually did add in people of color, I was actually very happy to see um, alternate choices to um, what we'd originally looked at. So I, I'm very happy with it being that. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Darren. Sammy, how are we with the results? Are we ready to look at what well, our- I think, yeah, we are converging to, to certain results. So at this moment, we are 36%. Uh, uh, well, it became 42%, it's still changing. Okay, so 42% right. uh, thinks it should be ethnicity blind mm -hmm. and 58% thinks uh, it shouldn't be. That it should not be ethnicity yeah. blind. Aha, huh, interesting. So there's more people, it sounds like, that would yeah, that want is to have slightly, control of that. If it ends this way, that is slightly opposite that what we did also in Europe, right? In, uh, mm -hmm. in Tell Bali, us about that. Tell us about that. We made a similar poll for the same question. Mm -hmm. It was, well, almost exactly the opposite. So here we have 42% yes and 58% no in uh, Berlin Film Festival. We had 58% yes and 42% uh, uh, no. Hmm. All right, close, but not quite, right? So it's yeah. interesting that the different mm -hmm. um, ways of approaching that um, across the pond. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Oh, it's changing actually, it's coming to close <laughs> 54, 46. Uh, so yeah, we are really, Converging uh, 50 to 50 line, but yeah, that, that goes close to each other. Okay, all right. So, how about we give it? So, we give it a couple more minutes, and then you kind of, uh, in a couple of minutes, just raise your hand and we'll come back to you and you can tell and us. 50 50. How that, yeah. <laughs> how that close out. Okay, we're getting the play by play. Okay, 50 50. So, it sounds like pretty even uh, split down the middle of people who think you should and should not uh, be able to mm -hmm. put in your wishes yeah. for ethnicity. So, Darren, if I can bring it back to you in the meantime, being an expert, of course, in the talent management uh, industry, how, how do you feel like this is actually we're going to take a step back now and we look at the, the general approach of the industry right now towards diversity. How, how is it looking for you? Have we made steps in the right direction? Well, look, I can only speak as an ally um, because, you know, it's not my voice to to actually make this decision. I think on paper, we, we are starting to look a little bit better, but I think there's a lot of lip service that's given. I think we can do a lot better. Um, 
I don't know what the exact answer is right now, but I do have hope. I'm seeing so many more roles open up to BIPOC and to allow um, uh, people that have um, originally not had a voice to finally have their voice. So that does give me a lot of hope, but um, I feel that we've got a long ways to go still. And do you think that uh, these AI features could support in that direction? I do. Um, I also feel what's great about uh, using Largo AI is the capability that you have to use more of an international um, concept when casting. So that's what's really opened up um, my viewpoint is looking at what's capable internationally. I think that's going to really change a lot of hearts and minds. Hmm. Have you shared that experience, John? I've really opened it up to an international playing field. I think so. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to notice it in the, the scripts that writers send my way. Um, there, there's such a, um, a new way of, of looking at um, old themes and films that are, are tried and true to, to come with these new perspectives. So I think that's what makes it exciting. Um, just being able to see this, you know stories that we love represented on on screen and just told with with new characters and uh with new new ideas brought to them so it is very a very exciting time in our industry and earlier you mentioned sean that um i mean you you were open to using ai you mentioned that you've used the largo um already technology you're smiling and nodding so i take it the experience was a positive one you know, it's just, um, you know, to have lived with a, a, a project in development for so long, then run it through the, the software to see um, the the script represented in a new way and, and see, you know, some of the, the algorithms, they, they spit out like this genre recipe. So I'm able to see my script represented in like a bar form where um, it's almost like a wave file. So it, it acknowledges when the script is more exciting in certain points and you'll see a pivot up um so and where it may be the more docile moments or a, a line going down so to see my whole film in front of me in, in bar form it's i can see where the where uh some excitement needs to be injected into the script and 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 uh follow the um the, the tools that the ai is giving me to just to to improve upon the project Thank you. I want to check in quickly with Sammy. Um, how are we doing with those results? Have, have, have yeah, we I think we, closed are, it? we have been really stabilized and then it has changed uh, the results significantly. So we have 53% for yes, so it should be at least still blind, and 47% for no. So eventually we are pretty similar with what we had in Berlin Film Festival. Aha, interesting. So it's really, it seems to be an international react the same reaction no matter where right mm -hmm. yeah here i think for the no i can also understand the concerns because this is also what we are having with, with some producers using our ai tools uh, that that they have really the cases that character is defined with a certain ethnicity and sometimes these are historical uh, characters uh, so for that actually we were thinking how what we can do without without uh, giving at least information so one thing we are thinking maybe if like we will have today also a, a biopic a biographical film for this kind of cases mm -hmm. to have this uh, face similarity thing so let's say i want an actor similar to that person but apart mm -hmm. from that ai shouldn't learn the ethnicity itself automatically yeah. and how, how so how did uh, tell me how, how did producers react once you developed this ai ethnicity blind feature uh, was it some, what we what we've seen yeah. today is the results kind of mirror that or was yeah, there I mean, resistance really, or i think it's it's really that we have similar distribution with the producers as well here we have obviously film professionals that also reflects that uh, i mean many are for that, so they, they think it's also, it's also a way to change uh, this diversity problem uh, in the industry. Uh, because AI brings on your table some actors maybe you wouldn't think 
maybe because of also with some cultural biases that are coming that is uh, blocking you. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, yeah, I mean, still some were insisting because, okay, for example, we have, uh, we had a film, like a second world war film, the, uh, so there is Hitler as character, and then AI was proposing a black actor to play uh, this role as well. And, and he, yes. he was telling how come and I can go uh, with that. So with historical, once uh, we have like a, historical films especially in practice yeah that that doesn't work yeah yeah I, yeah I can I, I can imagine that that's that's almost a different yeah that's just a different situation a different kind of situation mm -hmm. when the scripts are more open then obviously you have more you can it's more room for diversity yeah. and approach and thinking and 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 Darren apart from diversity then what might be the benefits of AI in the casting process overall so I'll be absolutely um, uh, honest about my choosing to work with Sami and Largo AI. It, it was more about getting in um, to get an idea of what the financiers want. That was, that was basically it. We, of course, will always depend upon our casting director to make the best decisions and to make the offers, but this gives you an open window into what um, sales is seeing, what the sales agents are seeing. And um, on Monday, I watched the, Jonathan Kerr had stated from the finance conference, he said, it's all about the data. Um, data is the most valuable instrument to streamers right now. So in looking at that and trying to get your film to where it's most capable, that's why we chose to go with Largo AI. Interesting. So you were, again, you were really looking at the financial parameters, not so much the casting. Absolutely. You have to, if you don't have your financing in place, you're not going to have your movie and you're not going to be able to hire <laughs> casting. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> I think that is very true. <laughs> Nobody will disagree with that. Uh, that, that, that is for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now, Shana, now, 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 if, if, if I can come back to you, um, uh, we, we already, we know, what, what, what did get you on board with Largo? What was your, what drew you in? Um, I saw Sammy's presentation at, at Berlin earlier this year. And um, honestly, like every time I go pitch a project, uh, the, the gatekeeper behind the desk is always asking for, for data. So um, knowing, knowing Largo could um, approximate like streaming numbers, for example, or, or box office success of a film, if you put in the parameters that you're working under, that, that is valuable information that I can bring in along with my package script and the actors that I hope to work with, to have that data to go along with it, to give the, the gatekeeper more confidence in saying yes in my project, that, that makes it really exciting. I think it's just smart producing and, um, and uh, to, be, to show that I've done my homework enough to, mm -hmm. the, for them to hand over a check to, to go into production. Okay, fair enough. I hope everybody's listening <laughs> for data collection. Yeah. Yeah, Anna, Anna, can I also interject because I, I forgot to mention, but the comps are amazing. And I know you'll probably get into this, but the comps really um, gave us an, an, um, another window into what we needed and which is really helping with the financiers. The, the sorry, the, the comps? The comps, yes, exactly. Okay. Comparable movies, right? The software will spit out like a um, movie that will analyze your scripts, um, suggest other uh, movies that have been produced in the past that have, um, you know, comparable films and you can use the data, the financial data from, from their successes or failures to, to bring to your, um, the person making the decision about your, your film. Okay. And Sammy, I mean, I, I, I have to ask, I mean, obviously we've heard from both of these participants, you know, the, the really positive sides and how it's been very useful to them, but, but what would be, what is a downside? What's a, what's a challenge that you've encountered um, with the users that you, that you are well, I mean, recognizing I think as a there, challenge? Yeah, there is one uh, misinterpretation for AI in general, uh, I think. There is a fear by, by some creatives, first of all, because, uh, and this is coming because of 
exaggeration of AI. Uh, and some people think like there will be a machine writing the script for you to produce the film for you. Uh, it does all this process uh, for you, uh, which takes all creativity away uh, from human. But that's not the case. I mean, once they, they really see what AI is doing in reality, this is, uh, it's, it has no relationship with that. Uh, and this is also, for us, it was a, a way of thinking we want to design in a way uh, that it is an assistance tool. It, it never touches to, to creative parts. So basically you put your creative content into the system it gives you all these patterns, insights, but it doesn't tell you what to do. Mm. So you get just more tools, more insights in front of you uh, that you can use uh, to review your content, to develop your packaging here, as we discussed today, today uh, to, to work on your casting. And as Sean mentioned, yeah, to have more data in front of you uh, to, do, to do all this homework, uh, at a pre-production stage and and but fortunately yeah many producers once they first see and once they first play with the tools they 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 go over with their uh, these uh, fears uh, so that's that's a positive side so it's safe to say that video isn't going to kill the radio star <laughs> <laughs> i mean yes you're right you're addressing you know there there is a big fear as we mentioned in the beginning you know is cast is AI going to replace somehow that human touch, which you also address in your presentation. And, and, uh, and the idea is that, uh, no, the, you know, the human factor is still, is still absolutely important, which brings me to Sean. Now as a director, um, what, what are some potential problems that you may have run into in casting where you would have thought, okay, AI has really helped me get through, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, yeah, I guess just identifying who's out there that, uh, our, our casting directors might, might not know of like fresh, new, exciting talent. Um, the other, you know, one of the, I guess the shortfalls of the AI is, uh, the AI not knowing the actor's backstory or, or special skills or family history, you know, those small nuances that can bring mm -hmm. so much to a character, but you know, the algorithm might not be aware of that. So that's where like the human factor will always be will supersede what the the AI has to offer. But yeah, so it's that, that human touch, that that shared understanding of the smallest looks, those indecipherable human qualities that uh, might not be detectable should you solely rely on, on AI to cast your film. But that being said, it is a, an amazing tool to see what's out there, what um, what a potential gatekeeper might be looking for in, in casting a film and just mm -hmm. As, as a starting point for for your your long road to finding the right characters or right actors for your film. Mm. It's interesting because at the Berlin Film Festival, we had a, I believe it was Berlin, Sammy, if I'm not mistaken, we spoke to actors. No, we, we spoke about, we spoke to actors who had uh, about mm -hmm. whether the, the entire AI concept in, in their yeah. casting uh, process. And, and interestingly enough, I mean, there was a lot of openness to it. And I, and I wondered, um, Darren, you know, coming again from your talent management expertise side, have you encountered this with with any of your talent? I mean, are they? Have you gotten a feeling for? Are they? Oh, is there an openness to this, or is it still so new that people are still wrapping their heads around it? The idea <laughs> well, that we'll I, use AI for casting. Um, I don't think they really um, have have thought about it on that level. At least the clients that I'm working with, they they tend to think about, you know, what they can be in immediately. So they're, they're not really focused on this yet, but I'm sure give them time and there'll be an app that's going to try and raise their numbers like on Instagram or, or on um, uh, TikTok gotcha. to uh, make them higher up to get them, uh, you know, to that point. I'm sure there will be companies that will be doing that very soon. But what I wanted to do is go back into what Sean was saying. Um, what we were so happy with is, is in our biopic, um, we have an amazing lead actress attached that we're thrilled about her into the system. And then 
uh, AI actually spit out a bunch of other lead potential actresses and she ranked the highest. So it just mm. kind of gave us the, the, the um, it instilled in us that we were on the right track. And then for all the other characters that were put um, into the system, we actually put our wish list and then it gave us, um, you know, it categorized them uh, numerically. So it, it gave us like this actor is at 90%, this actor is at 86%. So it actually gives us a directive of who we can go out to first you know, depending upon schedules, it's always crazy with schedules. Um, but that's been probably the biggest benefit um, to the system that we really appreciate on the casting side. And that is actually, uh, Darren, a great lead in to our next um, discussion point, which is actually another question for our audience. And this is, uh, there it is. This is one of the casting, big casting questions out there right now. I mean, not everybody's a 007 fan, but there's a lot of people asking who is going to be the next 007. So, um, Sammy, I will let you take it from there. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's uh, start from uh, it's a popular question, as you mentioned, on, on that to a bit understand better how the casting uh, Process is working with, with AI tools. Uh, Shall we go ahead and, and the, ask the audience, Sammy? Should we do the audience question yeah, now? Yeah, sure. Okay, Before, all right, let's start. With that. Actually, I have one more slide. So okay. one thing, uh, <laughs> so we had we made a few analysis uh, over over uh, this uh, uh, James Bond acting. Uh, here you see the previous James Bonds. Mm -hmm. So what we did, uh, we asked AI what it thinks uh, in terms of the match. Uh, of these actors with, with the characters. Uh, here you see the scores that the system is giving. Uh, they are pretty similar. There's only two or three percent differences. Uh, Roger Moore is having uh, the highest, uh, but yeah, that's the difference is really uh, uh, small. Mm -hmm. So it will be good actually to compare now uh, this course with some potential actors that, that we will discuss. Uh, uh, in a bit together with the audience as well. Let's go to that actually. Uh, we got these seven actors and actresses uh, who have been uh, speculated as being uh, James Bond uh, in the press. As you have heard, uh, there has been a discussion for the possibility of having a woman James Bond as well. That's why yeah, we had this uh, to actress as well, Katie Shekhov and Paula Patton. Uh, and then we have Henry Cavill, Idris Elba, Carl Urban, James Norton, and Aidan Turner. Uh, so here, yeah, now uh, from those actors, uh, we can ask again the audience, uh, what do you think who should be uh, the next James Bond over these actors? All right, and do they use the same, they go to menti.com, uh, do yes, they use the same number? On this. Yeah, it's the same thing, uh, menti.com, the same code. Actually, if you have not closed it, it should update already uh, mm -hmm. to you to this uh, NIF uh, survey. If not, you should enter again. Okay, I'm very curious to hear the results of this. Um, yes, yeah, so many, so many thoughts about who should be the next 007. Which brings me to our panelist, Darren. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who do you think should be the next 007 of the people on this list? Well, I, of course, am a huge fan of Idris Elba's, um, but, uh, and even though they're not on the list, I also love Regina King. I think she's a badass, excuse my French. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think it's time of the woman. So, I'm open. The best part of this process, though, is the fact that uh, Bond is already financed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you think it'll be financed regardless of who's cast? It just exactly. Lives on. Yep. Yeah. 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 What about you, Sean? What do you think? Uh, based on the actors that we just saw, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think for for me out, out of that list, I think it would be hundred uh, percent Idris Elba. He's, he's <laughs> Okay, so that makes three of us. 
Mm -hmm. He's handsome, beloved by all. He's British. He looks great in suits. He's probably everything <laughs> I want to be in life. And uh, <laughs> see, I think that like, casting a, a black man in the role is tremendously exciting. I can envision him on a poster. I mean, there may be those purists out there who claim that Bond has to be a white man because that's the way it's always been. But you yeah. know, times change, and this doesn't erase the last 50 years that have come before. And I think this just complements. Uh, that vision that um, Ian Fleming had. I think Idris Elba would be an, an amazing one. Sammy, what do you think? And actually, I would say uh, the audience uh, agrees both Darren and Sean. Idris Elba is leading with a big difference. Wow. Uh, so most of the audience has put him as uh, rank one which is mm. followed by Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill is uh, in second position, but there is a huge difference. Uh, so really the majority has selected Idris Elba as number so... one uh, position. Good choice. Good choice. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done, everybody. <laughs> well done. And us on the back. At the bottom, we have James Norton. Uh, James Norton. At the bottom, James, yeah. he's the least convincing. Uh, has anybody asked Idris? <laughs> I wonder if he even wants to be James Bond. <laughs> um, but we will find out. So, so great. So, so interesting what we can, uh, what, uh, what AI, so AI can tell we us. We can yeah. see now, yeah, the AI okay. uh, forecasts. Okay. So AI, uh, if you look at to the bottom, actually, that's one thing I think I want to just tell now. James Norton and Aidan Turner is getting lowest match rates by mm -hmm. AI. And it's also on our survey. They are at the bottom of the list, as I mentioned, and there's huge difference. Uh, and actually, it's interesting. So this survey uh, ranking and this it has similarity, except the mm -hmm. Idris Elba is getting to the top. The, the rest is very similar with here. Uh, here, yeah, we see Carl Urban is getting uh, the highest match rate by AI. But one thing to note here, hmm. I think uh, all top five is getting good match rates. If you also consider the, the previous James Bonds, uh, previous actors that I shot, their, their scores by AI was around 90%. Yeah. Uh, so in that manner, actually, they are uh, pretty, uh, pretty similar. So interesting because, and this is with the ethnicity blind feature. Yeah, there is no ethnicity here, no gender, no ethnicity. So it doesn't have also gender information because if FIT has learned also this gender part, uh, it mm -hmm. will penalize highly, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Katie Shepov and Paula Patton, because as historically there is no uh, success or there is no choice uh, in that, so it could it could penalize those because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, yeah, fascinating. Because according to AI, it would be either Carl Urban or two women. And then, you know, fifth, you've got Idris. So, yeah. um, wow. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's try it again then, Sammy, with another with another, uh, another character who, as you mentioned earlier, is based on, mm -hmm. a, on a real yeah, historical figure. Yeah, another case study. But this time, this time, this is a biopic. It's a biographical movie uh, that is in pre-production. So we have a screenplay uh, for this film by producer, and uh, screenplay has been written by Radik uh, Kuduyarov. Uh, he is also the producer of the film, and and it is about the life of Rudolf uh, Nureyev, uh, this uh, legendary a dancer, a choreographer. Uh, he ha is known as like uh, one of the best of his generation. And his life is actually very interesting. If uh, uh, most of you already uh, know it, uh, know it probably because uh, both his lifestyle and also all this political uh, controversy because he's a Russian dancer from Soviet time, but he is uh, uh, escaping in a way to, to France and, and he spends all of his uh, life in uh, uh, Western Europe. And But during that moment, KGB, the Russian agency, they try to bring him back uh, mm -hmm. 
to to Soviet uh, Union. Uh, and actually, he's uh, a good comparable to this film is Bohemian Rhapsody because his life is having similarity in many manners uh, to Freddie Mercury. Also, his screenplay uh, it has a lot of similarity in that manner. So the system is automatically finding Bohemian Rhapsody as a very strong uh, comparable for that film, which has been very successful. And there as well, the, if you remember that times, the casting, the lead cast was a really a big part of the discussion uh, for that film. So now here as well, so we have uh, an important question, uh, who should be uh, the lead cast to, to represent this uh, legendary Ale dancer. And before going over there, I just want to show a few uh, additional uh, AI results over that that could be helpful also for, for the cast selection. So the system is predicting what type of audience might like uh, this film. It thinks uh, women will like more than men, 62% uh, to versus 38%. And also in terms of age groups, it sees the uh, like highest potential for the age group 15, 18 uh, to 30. Mm. And then let's look at also this character relationship map that is generated by AI. Here, the system automatically shows in a single graph, uh, all the relationship map inside the story. The size of circles uh, shows the importance of the character. Here, obviously, we have Rudolph in the center as the biggest circle uh, as the protagonist. And then the thickness of edges between the circles, it shows the level of interaction between those uh, characters. So here, yeah, if you look at Rudolph, uh, we see this thick edge. Uh, this uh, represents the strong relationships. Albert, for example, this is this KGB agent uh, spy that that follows him uh, many years. Or we have this Margot that was a friend, becomes also a, like a lover, or, or we have also Eric, uh, and I think Paul, uh, which are also friends, but at the same time, some lovers at some part of the story. Uh, yeah, so we can see overall this uh, relationship map here. And from that, now we can go think about some potential casts for, uh, mm uh from these possible actors here we have put uh, some actors that has been uh, proposed by uh, producer uh one thing you can see here we have already put the ai match rates is uh, the ones on in, in green we have also put their popularity star meters from uh, imdb uh, you see we have the actors like uh, sam hogan uh, having a very low match rate by our system, 65%. But star meter is very high. So it's, uh, in terms of popularity, is very strong. But then we have also the actors like August uh, Wittgenstein with very high match rates, 93% and very uh, well lower star meter, like 14,000. Uh, and something with, with a combination, Rupert Brandt, 93% uh, match rate and also uh, very well star meter 1627 so here again the question will be uh, for the audience who should be the lead cast uh, for, for Rudolf Nureyev yeah. who should be cast I, I have a question um, obviously we're talking about a classical ballet dancer so for example a skill like dancing is that incorporated into the AI uh, process? No, I mean, not directly, indirectly, it might be because, for example, if an actor has been in a dance related movie or musical before, that increases his match rate. Uh, if he hasn't been, it's probably it will reduce, uh, reduce uh, in a way, but that's indirectly. So it's not like a specifically looks like if it's dancer or not. Okay. Okay. See, so, yeah. Okay. So you, these are so. In this case, you it would be helpful to really um, physically meet these actors too, right? Or are physical yeah. attributes like height and build, or is this also included? Mm -hmm. uh, that part, yeah. We will have actually one physical match uh, 
match uh, case as well. I will show this after we have these uh, results for that. Because AI can look to physical matches as well, uh, separately uh -huh. for such, uh, yeah, for biopics, these cases. Uh, biopics, yes, that, that could and, be important. Yeah. And obviously, although they can chisel, achieve, uh, yeah. it make up a lot these days, but still, I mean, having uh, yeah, original faces is. Not yeah, bad. yeah, I'm just, uh, even just the features, you know, the chiseled features of Nudiev mm -hmm. and, uh, and the uh, yeah. candidates, you know, they all have similar looks like similar jaw bones, mm -hmm. jaw lines. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I'm interested. How's it looking? What yeah, are people saying? We are Ooh. getting uh, some well, results over here. Uh, well, well, but I think we should wait still a bit. Yeah, maybe we can ask. Sean well, we don't have too much or... time left in our session, Sam. Oh, so okay. let me just ask Sean and Darren. Darren, what do you what do you think? Who would you choose? So I love Bill Skarsgård for everything, but I think what I would have to do is go to my other characters and run the numbers and get as strong as possible with the numbers on the other actors, because I think with this type of a lead, it's so specific to the capability of either being able to dance and act um that you really that's something that's going to take a lot of fine tuning and i really think you're going to have to you can keep these people on the board but like rocket man you may have to go with more of an unknown and then cast your heavy hitters around um this character because they've, they've got to dance there's just no mm -hmm. if ands or buts about it so on this i do kind of balk a little bit with AI casting for the lead for this, because it's so specific. Okay, interesting. Sean. Yeah, I think I agree with Darren in a sense. Like, I don't, I don't think I agree with any of these choices. Certainly they're talented actors, but uh, Nuria was, was Russian. So I yeah. mean, we're, we're, <laughs> at also that. <laughs> we're yeah. all these, you know, we're at a time in history where all cultures are being represented on screen authentically. and these choices yeah. report that there isn't one talented Russian actor out there. So why do we need a, a Brit or a, a, a German to take on the role when he was an iconic Russian figure? So in this case, I kind of disagree with AI selection, but it's, you know, as a, as a starting point. It's just, just say a note on that, Sean. Uh, so normally, actually, the, 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 the country uh, of the actor is a parameter given by producer. Mm -hmm. For that film, actually, producer uh, is preferring that to be an english speaking actor as we will come actually to that point to have like really strong us release uh, for that film and then for, the, for that reason he wants the film to be in english and actor uh, from coming from us which is a yeah, more like financial aspect but i'll show you yeah, more details in one slide on that uh, in a bit and and I also have to interject, I know we're coming to the end, but um, on breakdowns, it really does take you when you're you're putting the project out, um, and usually that's after financing uh, is getting started, but you can really um, link in, you know, um, it, it, Russian speaking, um, uh, ballet capability, so there are some things that can be integrated in to the system. Yeah, actually, I mean, that's, that could be done because normally if you tell the, the cast uh, from, I mean, you, you can leave the country empty or if you say, okay, I want actors that are active in specific country, the system will just go for that. Actually, we could do this uh, for this specific uh, lead. We could tell the system we want actors from Russia speaking English. Uh, well, dancing capability, you cannot tell directly, but because of film features, so we... Uh, think it's catching uh, catching that but here yeah as our starting point has been like producers uh, uh, choice so here this is not like the cast that AI has proposed this is the cast that producer thought that might be a good fit and then we look AI results for for, for the uh, for this specific cast just yeah to clarify that part Okay, maybe we should look at the results uh, by audience with AI and AI as well. Uh, so, Rup uh, ah, it has changed. Okay, Rupert Friend, we have the list now uh, with the audience. And in the second uh, rank, we have August Wittgenstein. 
August the second and first is Rupert. Yeah. All right. And if we look at quickly AI results, so so then so as I mentioned, the pro producer selected this cast, so they thought as a short list of the cast. Now we put this also into the system how they impact financial results, like as a U.S. film, uh, U.S for the US audience, but here we have gross box office predictions. Uh, and here we see actually the audience has found uh, also the right actors in terms of, uh, in terms of like highest box office uh, results, because here we see Rupert Brandt and August Wittgenstein, they have highest uh, gross uh, as, as audience indicated as well. And actually, Douglas Boot as well is ha having lowest over here, which 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 is what the audience thinks as well in that number. So, Sammy, we should tell August that he better start with his ballet classes. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about yeah. it, because uh, yeah. he's going to be Nuriyev in a very short time. Yeah, but but one thing here to add here. So, as I mentioned, the system can look also physical similarities. So, what we did here, we said, okay, let's go really leave AI independent for just uh, physical similarity. So you see here uh, Rudolf on the left, and then we told AI without actually age limitation to bring the actors that it finds the with highest space similarity. And actually the producers was impressed after he saw that, he, Cillian Murphy especially, that has been a really a strong target uh, for him now because it has a really amazing uh, space similarity especially. Uh, and uh, Julian Sant, Harry Conrad, these are more, uh, older, but this could be considered if you were taking more like aged uh, time of uh, his life. Uh, yeah, so that, that's another thing. So uh, that I think AI brings really a great advantage. You can look over million actors in a very fast way, which could uh, fit to, to your uh, physical constraints. All right, and uh, to wrap it up quickly, um, we have we've had quite a few questions, Sammy, from the Just audience. One, maybe one sentence I can I add here. Uh, okay, <laughs> make it I quick. Tell that, yeah, because <laughs> Radik Kuduero, as I mentioned, he's the producer of this film. I mean, I, I, want, I want to thank him for oh. allowing us oh, okay. to use that. Okay. It's at pre-production stage. Here you see more details about this film. Uh, just, I mean, he is in, it is in pre-production. If you have any interest for co-production opportunities, please yeah, contact us to connect with him. That's uh, something yeah, uh, he has asked to us. I wanted to uh, just yeah, bring okay. that on the table. Yeah. Okay, lovely. So, so the, the most asked question of this session, here comes. This is, <laughs> this is one exactly for you, Sammy. How much does this service cost? We have uh, different tires, different packages uh, for uh, like independent producers uh, and then for studios. Uh, so please, to get the specific price uh, for your volume of usage, please contact to us again from this email, info at Largo Films. Our uh, uh, colleagues will send you detailed pricing information. Mm -hmm. and, and you can also address how producers can try or I don't know, beta test or for try i mean we don't have direct trial but we have uh, these uh, special programs for independent producers which is limited normally uh, every uh, quarter we get these 20 producers in this uh, cohort and we have one open now that will have a deadline of 24 uh, november uh so this is uh, you get uh, you get a discount actually discount is compensated by film institutions some european film institutions who support mm -hmm. this platform so if you are interested uh, yeah please make an application you might get a slot uh, in a yeah, more affordable way mm -hmm. to use uh, these tools uh, for the first six months okay perfect and for those of you whose questions we did not get to uh, we apologize, but you know how that goes. There's only a certain amount of time. I'm sure you can also reach out directly to Sammy for any further questions, or will you be hanging out now at a, in any sort of a networking area, Sammy, or yeah. Darren or Sean? 
Will I'll you be there. Be available. Absolutely. Yep. For for a bit. Okay. All yes, right, absolutely. Looking forward. Okay, well, on that note, thank you to the both of you for joining us today, and of course to Sammy for organizing and for bringing us together, Largo AI, and then um, we couldn't have done it without AFM, so thank you for making it possible for us to be here today. On my behalf, it was my absolute pleasure. Um, I read the chat. I've been told Idris Elba, uh, Idris Elba is out of the running that he's not interested in being Bond to all of our disappointment on this panel, but yeah. you never know, you never know. But in that case, anyway, it's been a pleasure. Thank you maybe so much. Maybe AI will us. change his opinion if he sees the <laughs> Maybe, maybe he needs to see the results. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and see how, how everybody coincides on that he should be the next 007. Maybe that Thank you so much. Anna Maria, right. Sammy, Sean, it was great. Thank you. Yes, well, thanks thank to you all, all of you, thank you organizers. Much. And enjoy the rest of your day and the American film market. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.